What is up everybody? Renfail here. Welcome back to the channel for those of you who are returning visitors. Today we're going to be getting into a Pathfinder Kingmaker video for the CRPG by Alcat Games. If you've never played this game before, it's based on the obviously Pathfinder rule set. And one of the first things I like to do anytime I'm playing a new game is dive into and make a pair of videos around the character creation process, one of which is purely around the races that the game offers you, and the other one is the classes that the game offers you. And from there we branch out into class guides and all the other fun stuff that we do. Now we're already streaming the game, we're already playing a ranger, uh, an elven ranger through, so it's time. It is time to come in and make our first official, well, what race should I play? What races are available in Pathfinder Kingmaker? So without further ado, we're going to dive into the character creation process this morning and show you what races are available and which one you might want to choose based on what you're going to be playing through this game if this is your first time playing through. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon as we get going. Let's dive in. Now the first thing you're going to notice when you're creating a character is obviously there's some pre-designed things that you can choose from, but because we want to actually know the races of the game, you're going to click and create a new character. Now if you already know what you're going to be playing here, you can just pick a portfolio picture. We're going to skip through the portrait process here right now because it's not important to what we're actually playing. It's just there. It's something you have to do before you dive in. And from here we're going to get into the actual races of the game. Now, right up front, there are quite a few races to choose from. If you've never played through the Pathfinder universe before, you've got your standard array of humans, elves, dwarves, gnomes, halflings, half-orcs, half-elves, I should say, half-orcs, and the Asimur, which is a uh, half-breed, so to speak. I don't know the best way to say that. Can you say half-breed? I don't know if you can. I don't know if that's politically correct. It's half of something. Uh, and, and we'll get into that later. So you have your standard array. So if you've ever played a CRPG before or any sort of tabletop game before or any other RPG, these are going to be standard. Pretty much every game out there has them. Um, when you start to get into things like Pillars of Eternity, where they're dealing with their own unique world, they might have some stuff that you've never seen or heard of before. Same thing with your playing like Celastic Crown of the Magistrate. They've got their own sort of like Dragonborn and some other stuff that are unique to their world. But because... Pathfinder was originally based on 3.5 edition D&D. &D. You're dealing with sort of the standard array of races that most people like myself are familiar with because we used to play D&D &D back in 1st edition and 2nd edition. So if you're familiar with all of those, then you're going to feel right at home playing Pathfinder Kingmaker. Uh, but there are some differences in how the races have their bonuses and what feats and other things they get compared to, say, 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, or even if you're playing like the old Icewind Dale or Baldur's Gate games, which are based on like 2nd edition AD&D. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into each one of these and the unique aspects that each race brings to the table so that you can fully understand what you're getting into when you come in and create a character for the first time in Pathfinder Kingmaker. So let's talk about humans right out of the gate. If you've ever played a human in other games, traditionally these are the ones who have like sort of the more generic ability array, uh, but they get more skills and abilities, and that's somewhat similar here. Humans start off with plus two to any one ability score at character creation. So you get to choose which one that is, but that's one of the base bonuses that humans get out of the gate. They also get um, access to um, a feat. Humans receive, so everybody gets one feat at first level and every two levels of the However, humans receive a bonus feat at first level. In addition, humans gain one additional skill rank at the first level and then an additional rank whenever they gain a level. So in, in exchange for not being as... Um, in a, in a, you know, you're not getting all the bonuses that other races get, but you do get the feats and skilled bonuses, which I think is always sort of a standard thing for most humans across the board in other RPGs. There's also a great explanation here of the humans. They possess exceptional drive and a great capacity to endure and expand, and as such are the currently the dominant race in the world of Pathfinder. Their empires and nations are vast, sprawling things, and the citizens of these societies carve names for themselves with the strength of their sword arms and the power of their spells. Humanity is best characterized by its tumultuous and diversity 
tumultuousness, excuse me, and diversity, and human cultures run the gamut from savage but honorable tribes to decadent devil worshiping noble families in the most cosmopolitan cities. Human curiosity and ambition often triumph over their predilection for a sedentary lifestyle, and many leave their homes to explore the innumerable forgotten corners of the world or lead mighty armies to conquer their neighbors simply because they can. Physically characteristics of the physical characteristics of humans are as varied as the world's climes. From dark skinned tribesmen of the southern continent to the pale and barbaric raiders of the northern lands, humans possess a wide variety of skin colors, body types, and facial features. But generally speaking, their skin color assumes a darker hue the closer to the equator equator they live. Man, I need to drink more coffee today. So that's a basic overview of the humans in the game. Of course, you can choose male or female if you'd like to see how they look. And you can go over here into the body type and change that and hairstyle and everything else to make your character look however it is that you want it to look based on your personal preferences. Next up are the elves. Now, elves, right off the bat, you're going to notice that they've got some um, stats differences up here that are quite a bit different than the human. They got a plus two to dex, a minus two to con, and a plus two to intelligence. We'll talk about the other uh, aspects of that here. Uh, elves, it says here, the long-lived elves are children of the natural world, similar in many superficial ways to fey creatures, yet different as well. Elves value their privacy and traditions, and while they are often slow to make friends at both the personal and national levels, once an outsider is accepted as a comrade, such alliances can last for generations. Elves have a curious attachment to their surroundings, perhaps as a result of their incredibly long lifespans or some deeper mystical reason. Elves who dwell in a region for long find themselves physically adapting to match their surroundings, most noticeably taking on coloration reflecting the local environment. Those elves that spend their lives among the short-lived races, on the other hand, often develop a skewed perception of mortality and become morose forlorn, as a result of watching wave after wave of companions die in age before their eyes. While they generate taller than humans, elves possess a graceful, fragile physique that is accentuated by their long pointed ears. Their eyes are wide and almond shaped, filled with large, vibrantly colored pupils. While oven clothing plays off the beauty of the natural world, those elves that live in cities tend to bedeck themselves in the latest fashion. Now, right out of the bet, right out of the gate, um, elves have keen senses. It says here that dwarves, elves, gnomes, half elves, half orcs, and halflings receive a plus two racial bonus on perception checks. Also, Elven Magic plays into the fact here. You get a plus two racial bonus on caster level checks to overcome spell resistances and a racial bonus on knowledge arcana skill checks made to identify the properties of magical items. You also get Elven Immunities to enchantment spells and effects. It's a plus two against those. An Elven Weapon Familiarity, which means you're proficient with longbows and composite longbows, as well as longswords, rapiers, and shortbows, including composite shortbows. And any weapon with the word Elven in it is treated as a martial weapon hey everyone ren fail here with the uh, commercial part of the video where i say hey if you like this don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update and thanks to all of our supporters are uh, here on youtube and over on patreon our highest members our guild champions crazy relative remy d here on youtube and don't forget if you want to support it's really easy you can do the memberships below the adventurers guild three different tiers there's also the super thanks on any uploaded video or youtube short that you find there's also, of course, the Super Chats and stickers that you could do on any live stream or premiere. And the Patreon page if you want to dive into the fantasy world that I have with my brother and my wife, which is a tabletop game, a point-and-click adventure game, and a fantasy book series. All are great ways to keep this channel going and me going full-time. Thanks again for those of you who support. Let's get back to the video that you're watching now. Next up are dwarves, and you'll look up here at the stats, you'll notice that they get a plus two to constitution and a plus two to wisdom with a minus two to charisma, because they're ugly little bastards. Dwarves are stoic, but stern, ensconced in cities carved from the hearts of mountains and fiercely determined to repel the depredations of savage races like orcs and goblins. More than any other race, the dwarves have acquired a reputation as dour and humorless craftsmen of the earth, and it can be said that dwarven history shapes the disposition of many dwarves, for they reside in high mountains and dangerous realms below the earth, constantly at war with giants, goblins, and other such horrors. Short and stocky, they stand about a foot shorter than most humans, with wide, compact bodies that account for their burly appearance. Male and female dwarves pride themselves on the length of their hair, and men often decorate their beards with a variety of clasps and intricate braids. A clean-shaven male dwarf is a sure sign of madness or worse. No one familiar with their race trusts a beardless dwarf. Now, 
out of the gate. Dwarves have a base speed of 20 feet, but their speed is never modified by armor or encumbrance. So the slow and steady uh, racial trait makes sense. They also have stability. They get a plus four racial bonus to combat maneuver defense when resisting a bull rush or tripicant attempt while standing on the ground. They are also hardy, giving a plus two racial bonus on saving throws against poisons, spells, and spell-like abilities. Plus, they get a plus four dodge bonus against armor class uh, versus monsters of the giant subtype. And they have an innate hatred of orcs and goblinoids, so they get a plus one racial bonus on attack rolls against those of the orc and goblinoid subtypes. They also have Keen Senses, which we talked about from the Elves, and Dwarven Weapon Familiarity, which means they're proficient with battle axes, heavy picks, and war hammers, and any weapon with the word Dwarven in its name is treated as a martial weapon. Next up are Gnomes, who have a minus two to Strength, but a plus two to Con, and a plus two to Charisma. Tracing their lineage to the mysterious realm of the Fae, a place where colors are brighter, the wild lands wilder, and emotions more primal, unknown forces drove the ancient gnomes from that realm long ago, forcing them to seek refuge in this world. Despite that fact, the gnomes have never completely abandoned their Fae roots or adapted to mortal culture. As a result, they are widely regarded by other races as alien and strange. Gnomes are the smallest of the common races, generally standing around just over three feet in height. Their hair tends towards vibrant colors, such as the fiery orange of autumn leaves, the verdant green of forest in springtime, or the deep reds and purples of wildflowers in bloom. Gnomes possess uh, flesh tones from earthy browns to floral pinks, and frequently have little regard for heredity. They, are, they have highly mutable facial characteristics, and may have over, many have overly large mouths and eyes, an effect which can be both disturbing and stunning, depending on the person. Now we get into, they have the Keen Senses, which Dwarves, Elves, Gnomes, Half-Elves, half elves half share. They have an innate hatred against Reptilian Humanoids and therefore have a plus one bonus on attack rolls against them. Defensive training against Giants, which means like Dwarves, they get a plus four dodge bonus to armor class against them. They have an innate resistance to Illusions and have a plus two saving throw bonus against those spells and effects. And they have a plus one to the DC of any saving throws against illusion spells that they cast based on gnome magic. They also have the obsessive ability, which means they have a plus two racial bonus on knowledge world checks and have the slow movement um, base speed of 20 feet. Halflings have a negative two to strength, but a plus two to dex and charisma. Optimistic and cheerful by nature, blessed with uncanny luck and driven by a powerful wanderlust, halflings make up for their short stature with an abundance of bravado and curiosity. At once excitable and easygoing, halflings like to keep an even temper and a steady eye on opportunity and are not as prone as some of the more volatile races to violent or emotional outbursts. Even when in the jaws of catastrophe, they never lose their sense of humor. Well, almost never. Halflings are also known as inveterate opportunists. Unable to physically defend themselves from the rigors of the world, they know when to bend with the wind and when to hide away. Yet, a halfling's curiosity also overwhelms their good sense, leading to poor decisions and sometimes narrow escapes. Though the curiosity drives them to travel and seek new places and experiences, halflings also possess a strong sense of home and house, often spending above their means to enhance the comforts of a home life. They are over three feet in height to prefer to walk barefoot, leading to the bottoms of their feet becoming roughly calloused, with tufts of thick curly hair warming the tops of their feet. Their skin tends towards a rich almond brown and their hair towards a light shade of brown. A halfling's ears are pointed but proportionally not much larger than those of a human. Now getting into their racial traits, they are fearless, which means they have a plus two racial bonus on all saving throws against fears, which stacks but the bonus granted by halfling luck, which if we go down here is a plus one racial bonus on all saving throws. Beyond that, they have the keen senses that we've discussed before, the slow movement that we've discussed before, and they are sure-footed, which means they have a plus two racial bonus on all athletics and mobility checks. Similar to humans, half-elves do not have any inherent uh, pros or cons to their stats, but instead get a plus two to one ability score at character creation. Now, elves have long drawn the covetous gaze of other uh, races. Their generous lifespans, magical affinity, and inherent grace each contribute to the admiration or bitty, bitter envy of their neighbors. But of all the traits, however, none so entrance their human associates as their beauty. Hmm. Interesting. So, sometimes, because of this uh, natural beauty, this mutual infatuation, 
I'm reading through here real quick. So since the first two, okay, of all the traits, none so entranced to human associates as the elven beauty. And since the two races first came into contact with each other, the humans have held elves up as a model of physical perfection, seeing the fair folk as idealized versions of themselves. And for their part, many elves find humans attractive despite their comparatively barbaric ways, drawn to the passion and impetuosity with which members of the humans play out their brief lives. Sometimes this mutual infatuation leads to romantic relationships, and while they are usually short-lived, these trysts commonly lead to the birth of half-elves. Uh -huh. A race descendant of two cultures, yet inheritor of neither. Half-elves can breed with each other, but even those pure-blood half-elves tend to be viewed as bastards by human standards. And elves, it says, actually. Half-elves stand taller than humans, but shorter than elves, inherit the lean build and comely features of their elven lineage, but the skin color is dictated by the human side. While they do retain the pointed ears of elves, they are more rounded and less pronounced. Half-elves' human-like eyes tend to range a spectrum of exotic colors, from amber or violet to emerald green and deep blue. They do get the keen senses of dwarves, elves, gnomes, and halflings, but they also and also get the elven immunities, so they get immunity to magical sleep effects and a two plus two racial saving throw against enchantment spells and effects, but also they have adaptability, which receives a skill focus as a bonus feat at first level. Half-orcs, similar to half-elves, have no inherent bonuses based on racial abilities, uh, but they do get a plus two to any one ability score at character creation. Half-elves, unlike half-elves, it says half-elks get the worst of both worlds. While not exactly accepted, half-orcs in civilized societies tend to be valued for their martial prowess. They're usually forced to grow up hard and fast, constantly fighting for protection or to make names for themselves. Feared, distrusted, and spat upon, half-orcs still consistently manage to surprise their detractors with great deeds and unexpected wisdom. Though sometimes it's easier just to crack a few skulls. Both genders of half-orcs stand between 6 and 7 feet tall with powerful builds and greenish or grayish skin. Their canines often protrude from their mouths, and these tusks, combined with heavy brows and slightly pointed ears, give them their notoriously bestial appearance. While half-orcs may be impressive, few ever describe them as beautiful. Now, they are skilled, which means they get an additional skill rank at first level, and one additional rank whenever they gain a level, and they have the intimidating um, ability, which means they get a plus two racial bonus on persuasion checks on intimidation. Weapon familiarity is the orc weapon familiarity, great, proficient with great axes and falchions, and any weapon with the word orc in its name is treated as a martial weapon. They also have orc ferocity. It says when an orc is when a half orc, excuse me, is brought below zero hit points, but not killed, they can fight on for one more round as if disabled. Finally, we dive into the Asimar, who do not have any inherent bonuses to their stats. These are humans with a significant amount of celestial or other good outsider blood in their ancestry. While not always benevolent, Asimars are more inclined towards acts of kindness rather than evil. The Asimar heritage can lie dormant for generations, only to suddenly appear in the child of two apparently human parents. Most societies interpret Asimar birth as good omens, though it must be acknowledged that some Asimars take advantage of the reputation of their kind, brutally subverting the expectations of others with acts of terrifying cruelty or abject finality. They look mostly human, except for some minor physical traits that reveal their unusual heritage. These typically include hair that shines like metal or unusual eyes and skin colors. Now, because of their heritage, it says most Asimars do not know exactly where the celestial powers came from, and the similar qualities of many celestial touched beings hint at relatively indistinct or all encompassing heavenly force for their lineage. Some, however, possess more unique traits and abilities inherited from their supernatural forebears, to which they hint at the precise type of celestial being that affected their ancestors. Okay. You also get a light halo. You get a plus two circumstance bonus on saving throws against becoming blinded or dazzled. And they have an inherent acid bonus, um, resistance bonus, cold resistance bonus, and electricity resistance of plus five. Very groovy. So there you have it, everyone. That is a breakdown of all of the races you have available to choose from in Pathfinder Kingmaker. Now, which one you're going to choose is going to depend largely on whether or not you care about roleplay or meta. And it's largely going to be affected by also what class you're going to be playing. Don't forget to stick around because we've got a class guide coming next time. Until then, stay safe. Happy gaming, everybody.